Well, good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing? Yeah, I'm going to try my best to speak as clear as I can. It is an honor to be here with you guys today. It is always a privilege to bring a word. And I just want you guys to know that it truly is a miracle that um, to have the courage to stand up here. My, my good mentor, Tom Gensler, he's done amazing. And, you know, it all takes just one, one word of encouragement. Literally, he pushing me and believing in me has literally done a lot of growth in my life. And I'm just thankful for what he's doing. Today, I'm going to be speaking on this, what do you call this uh, theme? Fear not. So why don't you tell your neighbor, fear not. Fear not. Fear not. So we're going to be talking in the book of Deuteronomy. I hope I said that right. Deuteronomy. And we're going to go to chapter 20. And so if you have your word, I mean your Bible, you can just follow along. We're going to go to Deuteronomy 20. And we're going to be preaching on the four, on four verses, which is 1, 2, 3, and 4. And we're going to go from there. But let me start us off with a prayer. Father God, thank you, first of all, for this time. Thank you for this word. Thank you for we are in the right place in the right time. For you have a specific word for each one of us. And uh, please, Lord, just open our minds and open our hearts so we can understand it and we can apply it and we can live it. In Jesus' name, I pray all of this in your name. Amen. Amen. Deuteronomy 20, verse 1. So just follow with me. When you go out to fight your enemies and you face horses and chariots, an army greater than your own, do not be afraid. The Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, is with you. Beloved church, friends, mi familia, today I'm honored to bring a word of encouragement. Let me start off by asking this question. How many of you go through challenges day by day, week by week, month by month, so on and so on? If we're honest... We all have problems, and there is no shame on that. There isn't. You see, big problems are small problems when they're viewed through, uh, through God's sight. Are you guys with me? It all depends on our perspective, the way we perceive things. How many of you guys have watched the movie The Croods? None of you guys, huh? It is about this caveman who sees life through his perspectives. He's afraid of going out into the world. But you see, life is not like that. Not when you have Christ in your heart. That's right. You see things differently. Are you guys with me? You see, if you're familiar with the Old Testament, the Israelites were not to fear of the rivals because they had a faithful God on their side. Amen? Amen? So, today I want to encourage you not to look at the numbers of the adversities, but rather to look at God. We are to walk by faith. Look at what 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says. For we walk by faith, not by sight. You and I, we need to walk by faith and fight by faith. It's not by what we see. Are you guys with me? So my first point is, do not fear the enemy. Do not fear Fear not. Tell, tell your, your neighbor, fear not. Fear not. Listen, listen to the words that President Franklin Roosevelt said. The only thing we must fear is, is fear itself. Allow me to explain this. This is a, there is a fear that mobilizes a person. As when you hear the fire alarms go off. As when you hear the ambulance. As when you hear a fire truck. You get mobilized. But there's also a fear that paralyzes a person. And that's the kind of fear we need to put on our God. Are you guys with me? This is the kind of fear Moses is speaking to us today. Beloved church, today I need you to understand that everyone is afraid. Let's go to my next slide. Everyone is afraid, 
of something or someone. And that's not the problem, for even the strongest, the biggest, the most confident person has certain fears. Are you guys with me? Are you guys following? Yes. I'm standing here with my shaky legs. <laughs> that's what Hebrews, Hebrews 1, well, what's Hebrews 12, 12 says. Stand firm on your shaky legs. It's not easy. But I know who's right next to me. So I stand firm, firm right in front of you guys. I need you guys to please understand when we, when we fear the Lord and trust in the Lord, we must not fear the enemy. You see, Israel had nothing to fear for God who drowned the armies of Egypt would defeat the armies of Canaan. Let's read, let's read Proverbs 21, 31. The horses is made ready for the day of the battle. But the victory belongs to the Lord. It belongs to the Lord. So, we depend on the Lord. We trust in the Lord. Just like my mentor said, the way you see, sit on a chair, you fully rely on that chair. You let go because you trust on God. That's right. Amen? Get this. We must remember what God had done in Egypt. All these remembrance and reminders are to bring strength to our faith. If God had done it before, then He can fully do it again. Right. Let me ask this. Is, this. is there anything impossible for God? No, of course not. Mo Moses isn't telling them to have a poor trust, but a much richer, a much bigger, a much with certainty faith based on experiences that God has done, has taken them through. Now, how often, let me ask you guys, how often do we believers fail to remember what God has done for us? How many times? I'll be honest, I have sometimes forgotten where has God brought us out of, right? I bet we all have those kind of experiences. So when we encounter new trials or new adversities, we tend to forget how big our God is. And instead, we begin to see how the problem somewhat, it seems to be a little bigger than it actually is. We need to continually, continually renew our mind. How do, renew, how do we renew our mind? With the Word. Read the Word. We listen to the Word. We walk out the Word. That's how we renew our mind. And so that we can start developing this God-sized perspective. We need to run this short race. Look at what Hebrews 12, 1, 2 says. Therefore, since we are surrounded by a great a cloud of witness, let us also lay aside every way and sin which clinch so closely, and let us run with, with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising out the shame, and is seated at the right hand, hand of the throne of God. We put our sight in Jesus. We look into Jesus. Are you guys with me? So God is asking us today, not tomorrow, no next week, it's today to recognize the fact that he is walking right next to us. As Paul said in Romans 8.31, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Right. Who, can get, who can be against you when God is walking right next to you? Are you guys seeing what I'm seeing? Yes. And so when we begin to see the reality of the scriptures, the spiritual challenges become manageable. Amen? And we are reminded that God is present and active in the midst of the struggles. Let's proceed. Verse 2. Verse 2 says, When you prepare for battle, the priest must come forward to speak to the troops. Now, this priest, me and Tom, we can relate to this priest. That's why we stand here. That's why we stand firm on our shaky legs to remind the flock, to remind the body, to remind our family, my friends. You need to stand firm. Believe. Trust. 
You see, back in the Old Testament, the priests would carry the Ark of the Covenant. And they will also speak, they will teach, they will preach the Word of God. So that everyone can listen, so that everyone could be encouraged. This word is, say with me, it is vital to encourage. It's vital to encourage the body to trust in God. He always fulfills his promises. Always. Just as Israel needed to be reminded of Moses' words, today you and I need to be reminded. Look at what Deuteronomy 1.30 says. It says, The Lord your God, who goes before you, will himself fight for you, just as he did for you in Egypt before your eyes. He is fighting for you. He is taking care of you. Look at what Deuteronomy 3.22 says. Do not fear them, for it is the Lord your God who fights for you. His is the victory. Sometimes we tend to rely on our own strengths. And sometimes it feels like we got it all figured out. And maybe you could do it for, you know, such time, days. But we must rely on God. He has won the victory. The presence of the priest with the armies is a sign of Israel's full dependence on the Lord. Today we are not fighting alone. The same way the Lord fought for them, He is also fighting for us. In, in such difficulty or trials, the outcome did not depend on their own overwhelming strengths or, or, or on their strategies. No. This, this rather is depending on our obedience. When we obey the word, when we listen to the word, these words probably were in David's mind. Let's see what 1 Samuel 17, 45 said. Then David said to the Philistines, You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defeated. You see, David showed that his trust and the, his trust in the Lord who are, let me, let me ask you, who are you putting your full trust today? Who are you relying on today? Who are you depending on today? Let's meditate on that. My friends, today I'm, I'm, I'm speaking with boldness, though it seems like the enemy is bigger. It seems like the resources available to those who oppose the scriptures appear to be great and greater and that the battle is not fair or uneven. I'm, I'm here to tell you something. God has never lost a battle. Not once. He will never lose a battle. Here's what Paul said in 2 Corinthians 10.4. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy the strongholds. My friends, I understand sometimes it seems like we can't see this war going on because it's a spiritual world. But I'm here to tell you the war is real. The war is real. And that's one of the things I like about the other church I, you know, I used to go to. They had a big sign right before stepping out to the outside, and it said, the sign says, you are entering to the war. I said, that was pretty cool, but it's pretty real. But other than that, you guys are in the right place. Every time we go out there, we need to be reminded, we are, this is a war. There's a war going on. Whenever the priest is near, anticipate a battle. Anticipate it. The best hours come to prepare us for the worst. You see, we must learn from the highest priest, our Lord Jesus. He's the highest. Let's meditate on this next reflection that I read. Take this home. When the dove descends, this is talking about when Jesus was baptized with the Holy Spirit. When the dove descends, let's be prepared that we may be able to stand for 40 days against the devil. Do not be surprised at this. And whenever some experience of unusual hardships had visited you, say to yourself, this is God's sweet way of preparing me against coming trials. Let us walk forward, for a danger is near. The priest is next to me. 
I am drawing near to the battle. I don't know what lies before me, but he is aware of the difficulties I must face and the adversary I must encounter. He alone can equip me for the fight. He alone. He is the one who equips you. The Word is equipping me. You see, let's go. Verse 3. He will say to them, Listen to me, all you men of Israel. Who is he saying? The priests. Today, nowadays, are the pastors. I'm telling you all, listen to me, Logos Church. Listen. Do not be afraid as you go out to fight your enemies today. Do not lose heart or panic or tremble before them. That's right, yes. Be prepared. This is what my mentor says. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. We must be prepared. Always. Let's meditate on the words of Jesus. We're gonna be, let me read to you the red letters. Matthew 10, 16 says, I am sending you out like sheep among wolves. Therefore, be prudent as snakes and innocent as doves. Are you guys with me? Listen to what Matthew 10, 28 says. Matthew 10, 28 says, Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Look at what 31 says. Matthew 10, 31 says, So don't be afraid. You are worth more than any sparrow. Jesus is telling us, the ultimate priest, He's telling you today, do not be afraid. Are you guys with me? If a, if a person is not controlled by faith from the beginning, it will lead to fear and to panic before their enemy. So if the soldiers fail to listen to the priest, Jesus, they will become fearful and experience defeat. There, this reminds me of Genesis 3.10. This reminds me of the fall. What is, what is that? That's the evidence. And he said, this is Adam, I heard the sounds of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and, and I hid myself. This is the evidence of sin. I bet you Adam was not scared before the fall. But as soon as he ate for that for, forbidden fruit, he started feeling all these emotions. He was scared. But I'm here to tell you, fear not. Fear not because you have Christ within you. Fear not. Fear not is what every believer needs to hear today. Fear not is the message the Lord gave to Jacob when he left home to Egypt. Fear not is the message Moses gave to the Jews when they were standing right, right in front of the Red Sea. Fear not is what Isaiah repeated it several times to encourage the Jewish remnant. Are you guys with me? Are you guys following me? How many scriptures, let me ask you this, how many scriptures haven't we read? How many sermons, sermons haven't we heard? How many angels' appearances happen in the scriptures and the first thing that would say, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Are you guys following me? When we walk by faith and we keep our eyes on the Lord, He will give us peace. Look at what 2 Timothy 1 7 says for God gave us a spirit not of fear but a power and love and self-control and so let me ask you this if you have in fear what is the, the scripture is very clear God gave us a spirit not of fear we are not to fear you see we, we are we are to fear the right person which is our God are you guys with me verse 4 for the Lord your God is going with you. He will fight for you against your enemies. And He will give you victory. The victory is yours. All you need to do is rely on the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Here's what we need to do. I need you guys to... What, are, what do you guys think we need to do? Here's what we need to do. The reason why Israel could be confident against the enemies is because the victory was theirs through the presence of God. This is vital. This is why we come to church. 
This is why we come every Wednesday night. It's not because we come for the food. No. We come because we relied on the Word. We relied on Jesus. Not only is God present at the battle, but He is actively engaged in the battle. Whatever you're going through, whatever the circumstances is, whatever the struggle, whatever the problem is, you're not alone. You are not alone. When Israel was trusting and being obedient, they could never lose a battle. You see, you trust and then you obey. You obey the word. The truth gave confidence in their faith so that they would not become afraid. Don't miss this today. God is with you. God fights for you. He, God is fighting your enemies, your enemies, and ultimately God saves you. This saving, literally, it means He's bringing us safety or rescuing from a hazardous or dangerous position. Earlier, Moses said, this is what Deuteronomy 11.25 says, No one shall be able to stand against you. The Lord your God will lay the fear of you and the dread of you on, on all the land that you shall thread, as He promised you. It's the promise. Now, it is up to you if you take it. The promise is there. And let me tell you something. If you don't take it, someone else will take it. The promise is... The promise is not going to go to waste. You need to believe it. Are you guys with me? Yes. So, instead of fearing their enemies, the enemies would fear Israel because of God. Look at this picture. Are you guys seeing this picture? I'm, I'm pretty sure none of you guys know who that is. Have you guys watched or maybe heard the movie Hacksaw Ridge? Some of, you, some, some of the men have. Maybe not everybody. Hawks are rich. It's a movie that tells the story about Desmond Doss. This soldier fought and served in World War II. And so the crazy thing is that this soldier went to the war without a gun. Say with me, that, that sounds hard. He believed in the sanctity of human life. So you see, he suffered much abuse due to his faith. He truly went into war without a gun. That's a real picture, guys. That's real evidence. He went to, to fight without a gun. And so this is how he fought. As, as night fell and darkness came, this soldier crawled around looking for survivors. And, and one by one, he would drag them out of the battlefield. He would drag them through the side, through a cliff, ultimately saving 75 soldiers who didn't stand a chance of survival. They didn't stand a chance. But this guy, he did a great job. As he crawled around, you know how, what he would do? He would pray. He would pr pray these words. Lord, give me one more. Please, Lord, just one more. If that wasn't enough, he suffered a left arm fracture from a sniper shot. But when the war was over, he was awarded with the Medal of Honor. Amen. And you can see that. He was awarded with the Medal of Honor for his bravery actions in Okinawa. Desmond believed in the sanity of humanity and, and the value of every soul. I hope you value it as well. You see, when we step into the fight of faith, God fights on our behalf and gives us the victory. Question, what's holding us back? Our friends and families, they also need to be safe. They also need to be safe. It is time that you and I start fighting. It's time to start fighting this battle. It's a real battle. It's a real war. You may not see it, but it's there. It's time to start sharing the gospel. I guarantee you, God is with us. I guarantee you, we won't get shot. We won't get bombed. We must stand firm on our beliefs. We must start saving people. I got saved. I believe it. I mean, look at me. Sometimes I don't even know how God gets me this courage to stand firm on my shaky legs. But I'm here to tell you that it's time. It is time. 
take the war seriously. Thank you.